Hi, I'm Dan, and if you're new to homebrewing, so am I. Welcome to my adventures in homebrewing. Hey, it's Dan here one more time, and I'm happy to say that we are now, or should I say my podcast is now sponsored by Escarpment Laboratories, yeast production for the fermentation of the exceptional craft beer. Whether your kit is on the stovetop or in a commercial brew house, wholesale yeast and quality control for the profitable bro- pro brewer community engagement and education for the discerning home brewery. If you are a craft brewer and you love using quality yeast, then you really do need to check out Escarpment Laboratories. Hey everybody, it's Dan here one more time to say thank you to the great people over at Brewer's Friend for the fantastic offer they have just given us. For all the new users of Brewer's Friend for their first year, you're going to receive 15% off. That's 50% savings on this great piece of software. And what is Brewer's Friend? Well, Brewer's Friend is a complete recipe designer, brew day planner, and journal. The details make the difference between an average batch of homebrew and a truly ex- excellent brew that is repeatable. Brewer's Friend automates the details, guides you through the brewing process, and saves all the data. And how do you get all this fun stuff? Well, once you go in and you sign in and you go to sign up for Brewer's Friend, and to get that 15% savings, you need to use the promo code PODCAST. That's all you got to do when you sign up. Type in podcast for the promo code and you will get 15% off. Again, thank you to the great people at Brewer's Friend for this, and I'll see you on the other side. Hey everybody, it's Dan, and it's that time once more to go around the world one more time and have a beer or two along the way. So thanks a lot for joining me this week. It's greatly appreciated. And also, uh, I need to say thanks to Mark Price for being on the show uh, a couple of weeks ago, uh, talking about the new app that's coming out for uh, Brewer's Friend. Uh, I've been fortunate enough to be one of the beta testers and trying out the new bells and whistles on this great piece of kit that you can have on your phone so you don't have to lug your computer out to where you're doing your work if you're outside. Um, really really cool uh the timers the calculators the uh there's a there's a gambit of stuff i really can't go into any more much, much more than there is but it's absolutely fantastic so when it gets released stay in tune with them check it out there'll be lots of stuff to, to know check them out on facebook uh most likely that's where they're going to release the actual uh time the app is available also i gotta say thank you to brewer's friend also mainly because they have been so generous as to offer all new users for their software, which is honestly a really, real cool piece of kit. They're offering you guys 15% off your first year of subscription to the software. So all you got to do is when you go to sign up, use the promo code podcast and away you roll. So guys at Brewers Friend, Lorena, Nick, Mark, and whoever else is that I'm forgetting to mention, thank you very much for your generous, generous offer for people to come and use your software. Now, I got to say thank you to the guys over at Escarpment Laboratories. Guys, you guys are the best sponsors anyone could possibly have. Thank you so much for supporting my brewing habit and also my podcast. Um, just so you know, uh, these guys have, been, have come online uh, as a sponsor for me for the last a couple months now and uh, it's been absolutely a fantastic relationship with these guys Um, full of knowledge uh, when I go and I put my request in for yeast for my projects uh, they make recommendations to what makes sense and I follow their lead and so far it's been absolutely fantastic if you have any questions about anything that you're going to be doing for for beer or cider or whatnot email them ask them, tell them what you're thinking. And most likely someone's going to get back to you right away and let you know what they think. So awesome, awesome, awesome time. So what's happening here at the, at the brewery? Excuse me. So um, we've got a few things happening, actually. So um, as, you, as you guys remember, a couple of weeks ago, or a few weeks ago, actually, uh, I made a, a Blackberry Blender Vice using Lactic Magic, which is one of the Scarborough Laboratories uh, pro- 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 proprietary see it's a bit of a tongue twister uh yeasts uh they have and uh i'm comparing it to see what it's like uh to uh lullaman's wild brew philly sour pitch 
So we'll see how that goes. And so it's all fermented out. Uh, it took about two weeks for it to ferment out fully. Then I transferred uh, it, it, the beer, on top of the blackberry puree. So we should see what, and then I let it go for another two weeks. So we should see what it's like after I bottle it, which is going to be done this week. And then I'll be letting it carbonate because it's all going to be bottle conditioned because you guys know how I am with soured stuff. It does not go near proper fermenters because I don't want that stuff infected. And then it's going to go into bottles and then we're going to have a good time and see how it goes. So stay tuned. Uh, I will be doing a comparison of the two beers, um, probably within the next next week or so and then uh, we'll go from there uh what else is going on oh uh, yeah i have a schwartz beer working away right now uh it's ready to go over to the bright tank and uh, we're going to be talking about that a little bit today but not just yet uh, so this is one of my favorite beers uh not because it's it's uh it's a Schwartz beer because it's a cool name, but it's it's very similar to what an English porter is. So we'll, a little bit, that's what that is for right now. And then also uh, we've got a, a new project coming online, which Escarpment has been, again, extremely, extremely generous in donating the yeast to this one one more time. Uh, we're going to be making a cherry lambic. Why am I going to be making a cherry lambic? Well, why not? I had my first time trying to do this type of style of beer. And uh, I have a friend coming over probably, I think this Friday, I got to double check uh, to see what's going on. <clears throat> and we're going to be making this fantastic beer. Uh, I had a small heart attack when I actually saw how much of the puree I was going to need. I'm going to need about 12 pounds <laughs> of cherry puree. So fortunately, I was able to find this stuff down in Toronto at uh, the Toronto Brewing. Guys, Zach and the boys, how's it going? Thank you so much for always being there for to answer my questions. And this has got to be a huge undertaking because not only do I need to do a basic wheat beer, then let it ferment out using uh, Escarpment Labs Classic Wit uh, yeast, and then I need to do two more pitches. I need to do the lactose bacillus and the Belgian sour blend to get it soured. And then also the cherries have to go on top of that. So this is going to be a rather unique beer. It's going to take... It's going to take a while to do. So I've got to get that going probably this weekend. So I got to reach out to my friend to see what's going on and uh, stay tuned because there will probably be a video coming out along the way for that one as well. So now what else have we got going on? Huh? That's about it. I mean, we've got uh, some stuff to do uh, out in the shop, uh, a little bit of cleaning and everything else. Uh, I got to say thank you to Dean at uh, M3 uh, out in uh, Mississippi Mills, uh, Pakenham, Ontario, Mississippi Mills Malting Company. Uh, the Honestly, this has been some of the best base malt I've ever used. It's absolutely fantastic stuff. So uh, Dean, uh, your Pilsner Malt's killer, Bit, your your two row is killer. Uh, it's been absolutely fantastic. I look forward to any new greens that you've come got coming online, guys. If you haven't checked them out, go check them out over on Instagram. Uh, I believe also on Facebook, and you'll see that they are a fantastic bunch of guys. Dean is actually a fantastic person. Go support local. You, he won't steer you wrong. Now, why are we here today? Well, we are here today. Basically, we want we want to talk about nice dark. German beers. Why? Why not? I these are I don't know what it is. It it there, there's this thing about a, a nice dark beer that I have an affinity for. Um, I enjoy the flavor. I enjoy the color, uh, the mouthfeel. Um, when a stout is poured, you got that nice roasty, uh, malty flavor to it. It's it's hard to describe. I mean. Yes, you can do things like chocolate grain or, 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 or roasted, more roasted barley or even coffee flavored uh, grain or, or add coffee to it. It's, it's just something about it that appeals to me. Now, I like a lot of dark beers. I like stouts. I like porters, barrel-aged stouts, imperial stouts, imperial porters, Baltic porters, brown porters, you name it. I love that stuff. But one of the beers I've recently found, and that it was only found when I went and visited a brewery out here in Ottawa called Tooth and Nail. And so far, they're the only local brewery that actually make this style of beer, which is actually really, really cool. Um, 
they had a Schwartz beer that they made, which is absolutely fantastic. I went in looking for a porter because it was the time of year that it's getting cooler out now where the darker beers are starting to come online and they should come online because they're, they're nice, they're hearty, and they're enjoyable. Now, I didn't know what to expect. I never heard of this beer. I didn't know what, what the beer was going to taste like. I feel, and they say, well, it's very similar to a porter. So well, what, can I, what, what can go wrong? Man, was I impressed. This has got to be one of the best beers I've ever had. So now I've actually done this now. I've done it once before. I did it while I was under pressure. It was actually pretty good, but now I'm doing it on the system with the glycol chiller and everything else. And I got to say, I, I was a little worried at the start, mainly because it took about three days, three to four days for the yeast to start working away. But once it started working away, oh my gosh, the gravity just dropped like crazy. It's absolutely not so. And I'll, I'll, I'll put in some of the charts in, uh, in here as I'm talking, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. It is absolutely fantastic of what the stuff can do. Now, I'll, I'll, I'll put the chart. I'll put the chart here. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Cameras are a little, little screwy at times. I'll put, I'll put it here so you guys can see. And it's, it's awesome, awesome, awesome. But enough of me rambling. Let's get into it about the beer here a little bit itself. So, uh, like I said, this has got to be one of my favorite beers because I, I love all things dark beer. And it's not because it's just similar to a stout or a porter it's just that it's full of flavor it's got that nice roasted barley flavor that i enjoy so much so now what is a schwarz beer so schwarz beer basically means black beer and i've got a few notes here so forgive me if i'm looking down i i I'd had to do a little research on this beer so so schwarz beer basically means black beer there was evidence that points to a similar evolution to a dunkel yes they are both black dark or black lagers, but the characteristic of Schwarzbier is more in line of an English porter. Why is that? Well, they're both usually about 5.6% alcohol. They're both beautifully roasted, nice dark, dark, other black or dark amber colors, really, really roasty flavors, almost on the verge of like coffee flavor, which is really, really nice. Both these beers have a nice roasted and malt characteristics with a smooth malt feel. The roots of the Schwarzbier lie in Th Thuringia. Thuringia. Again, I am going to try and say the German names. I am not saying that this is the right way to say it, so please be patient with me. So I am going to put up a, a screen, uh, share my screen here to sh give you guys uh, an idea where, where we're going here. Like that, like that. So right here, you can see where Thungura is. Uh, doo -doo -doo, uh, in Saxony, the oldest known black beer is in Braunschweiger Mum or Brunswick Mum, brewed since the Middle Ages. Uh, the first documented mention from this is in 1390 in Braunschweig or Brunswick Mum. The earliest documented mention in uh, Thungura is the uh, Kostirza. Again, I am sorry. I will make sure if you read in the description below, you'll see what I'm talking about. Uh, from 1543, the brewery, which later started producing Schwarzbier and still produces it today. Present day East Germany has many unique varieties of this style from regional breweries. While Dunkel production at the time was mainly in Munich, Schwarzbier has, has to places of origin the brewery in the famous town of Franconia Brewing City of uh, Kombach and the smaller hamlet of Thunguria each have dates with, to when they started brewing this beer dating back to 1543. So this beer has been around uber uber long, which is like, which, which to me resonates because it, you can feel that there was a lot of love put into this beer when they were actually crafting it but at the time you know what they're probably just making beer to to fill the void and also using what they had to to actually make it a really great product so now while lagers aren't as pop weren't as popular at the time it wasn't until after the second world war that this style started to become more popular and 
I can understand that because during the war, there wasn't a, really a whole lot of ways to do temperature control. And what do I mean by temperature control? Well, we all know what happens when things go a little squirrely. Uh, we all know that things can get a little interesting when it comes to temperature control. And this is probably why. There was probably no set way to actually make sure that you were able to keep your beer at that Loggering temperature, which we all know is between 45 and uh, 55 degrees Fahrenheit. So what do you do? Well, you stick with mainly what you can do in warmer temperatures, which is ales. So now in a glass, a Schwartz beer looks much like a British dark ale, but looks can be deceiving. So Schwartz beer, unlike a British ale, has a clean lager taste that leaves next to no perception of fruitiness on the palate. Instead, Schwartz beer produces a very mild, almost bittersweet notes of chocolate, coffee, and vanilla, which is some of my most favorite things this beer does. Um, now, why am I so excited about this beer? Well, the reason why I'm so excited about this beer is that it is got to be one, one of the most intricate things I've done to how much eat, how much malt and how my how finesse how finessed it is so here i'll share my screen again and i'll show you this part there we go so right here is the actual recipe and you can see here uh there's a you've got american pilsner you've got uh, munich you've got some other caramel or crystal 30 you've got american chocolate you've got carafa one and some roasted barley so as you can see here, as eight, you're maybe looking at a grand total of maybe maybe nine pounds worth of grain. So at first, you probably think it's going to be rather th a rather thin mash, and it's not too thin, and it's and it's not like trying to stir concrete, but the it it's it's substantial. Let's leave it at that. And the hops are extremely uh, complimentary, which is the Hallertau middle fruit, which is, I'm sorry, it's Horst. I know I'm butchering how you're supposed to say it, but these actually give the right amount of bitterness to it and flavor. And, there, and there's not a lot of craziness to it. So that makes things so much better to do. Um, now in down here, it says Escarpment Labs Munich Lager Yeast. So what I did, is uh, I used uh, Escarpment Laboratories Beer Garden, which is a new uh, blend that they have out, which I actually have been fortunate enough to use. And I'll put it here in the, whoop, wrong way. I'll put it right about here. There we go. Uh, I'll put it right about there and uh, I'll show you what it's about. And I'll also put the link for it down in the description. So this is got to be one of the coolest beers I've ever had. Uh, you can probably actually give this beer to someone let them try it, not tell them what it is. And they'll probably think it's a straight up English porter, but it's not. There's a lot to this beer that it, it, it's so subtle is that it's absolutely fantastic. Now, I know I'm just rambling. I'm sorry, guys. I'm rambling because I'm just so excited about this beer. So when I actually made this beer, it was, it was actually a really cool day. Um, it was actually a very smooth brew day be honest so we got up got our water in we'll start off with stripe uh, water at around 170 degrees uh and we had about three gallons three and a half gallons worth of strike water once everything was up temperature got dropped down to uh, 152 154 and then we started our mashing uh, we kept everything at the right temperature uh, which is great when you're using an all-in-one system because it's very easy to maintain it because once it's set it, it any temperatures dip it automatically kicks back in and goes from there got everything in did our sparge and then we brought everything up to a boil and it's an hour boil put in our in our super moss at the, at the end we added our did our hop additions and then we chilled it down. Now, the coolest thing about this is, is getting it into the actual Flex Plus and actually using it and using it with the cooling coil. Now, I had to play with the temperature a little bit with this, mainly, be, mainly because I went too low, I think, at the beginning. Uh, so I had it at around 53 degrees. 
uh, uh, Fahrenheit. And I think that might have been too low. So I brought it up to roughly about 55 and I gave it another day and a half. And within that day and a half uh, of after pitching it, so this is maybe three days later, the actual yeast started to, to work. And I was able to see that by using my tilt hydrometer. Uh, again, like I said, over here, I will show you uh, the chart and show you what I'm talking about. Um, so it, it's actually a really, really cool thing to, to see a beer once it starts rolling and you, you can't help but watch uh, as it ferments out because it, you're like, it's, it's my baby. This is, this is everything I've put into this. You put your own blood, sweat, and tears into it. I don't know about blood, but sweat and tears probably because you're probably crying a couple of times when you know you've made a mistake. Um, and then you go from there. Uh, I've had great success with this beer. And now I'm hoping this one actually turns out. I have been considering, because I believe it or not, I actually do have a couple of bourbon barrels right now, but doing a barrel aged version of this. But I don't know if that's possible or not. So if anyone has any uh, recommendations on a barrel aged German beer, let me know. Send me a comment, send me a like, whatnot, and that'll be greatly appreciated. And guys, it's going to be a short one today. I'm sorry. I've got a lot of stuff in the works though. So stay tuned. Thanks a lot for coming for along for the ride and a beer or two along the way. I'm Dan and I'll see you on the other side.